Is it legal or ethical to shut down a city, as Dr. Scott Gottlieb suggests? Let's bring in Lawrence Gostin, a professor at the O'Neill Institute for National and Global Health Law at Georgetown, uh, Georgetown University. Uh, professor, we talked about this a week or so ago. What power does the government have under the Constitution to quarantine a city, to create sort of cordon sanitaire around a city so that people can neither come in nor leave? What does the law say? Well, I mean, I think uh, it's really inconceivable that we would literally lock down a city the size of Seattle, let alone Chicago or L.A. or, or New York City. Um, the United States is not China. Um, we don't have the kind of social control or intrusive surveillance, and Americans wouldn't uh, accept it. Uh, in addition, I don't think it would be lawful. Um, certainly the federal government could not do that. If the state government tried to do it, or the local government, um, I think they would face, you know, quite formidable court challenges. Because remember, people who can't go in or go out, most of them won't be infected. You're leaving them in an active zone of contagion. Um, and uh, there's no um, uh, risk assessment, there's no evidence about whether or not this would work. And it would be a violation, I think, of civil liberties and human rights. There are other ways mm. we can deal with this. So there have been some cases where individuals have been asked to self-quarantine, and some of those individuals have sort of violated that self-quarantine, and in yeah. at least one case I'm aware of, have infected other individuals. Yeah. Does the government or do individuals have some legal remedy against someone who violates uh, either a directive to self-quarantine uh, and, go and goes out and gets somebody uh, infected, either a civil remedy or a, a criminal remedy, perhaps? Well, you know, first of all, it's, it's socially and ethically um, quite wrong for somebody who's infected or known to be exposed to infection to just leave their home. In a way, it's actually quite selfish. Um, because uh, that person is placing um, family, neighbors, community, businesses at risk. Um, so if you're ill, you need to stay home. But what if you somebody violates that ethical... If they've, if they've, well, first of all, the government should enforce it. <laughs> right. If it's a risk to the public, the government should enforce it. If they don't, and the person goes out and infects others... Um, it's very possible that the people who were infected would have a claim against the public health agency. That's what I'm um, wondering. Against yeah. the public health agency or against the individual who, who violated well, you, the directive? Well, you, it might be or the both. government. I think, well, I think it would be more likely the government because, you know, we, ha we have in law called, a, you know, a duty of care. Mm -hmm. um, and usually duties of care, you know, a doctor for a patient but a government for the community, um, protecting the community. There have been other, like, uh, kind of analogous cases. So, right. for example, when you have um, uh, somebody uh, in, a, in a naval base that where you have a lot of soldiers that have sexually transmitted infections, they let them go out and, and, and transmit those infections um, to their uh, to partners, to casual um, uh, uh, partners. You, you, there actually have been successful right. claims against the military. These, the same thing would apply to the government. These, are, mean, these are fascinating topics that we weren't even thinking of five or six no. weeks ago. They weren't anywhere on our radar screen. No, Let me weren't. close with one quick question about working from home. Yeah. Uh, should, should companies just allow individuals who want to work from home to do so? Should companies force people to work from home? What, what's the ethical dilemma there? Well, the ethical dilemma is this. Um, if the person is sick, that is, if they have flu-like symptoms, they should not go to work and the company should not allow them to come to work. If um, the person is capable of uh, uh, remotely working, that would be fine. Um, but you have a lot of service workers who aren't. And so for those service workers who are ill, you really need to keep them at home, but you have to be thinking about equity, um, like meeting their needs, sick pay. Um, a lot of people are there living paycheck to paycheck, right. and we, we actually owe them a responsibility 
but they need to stay at home if they're sick. It, it, this, this puts pressure on the social compact in lots of ways. It's exactly right. It is a social compact. Right.